Welcome to the Our Ability Podcast 2024. Excited to be back after a year hiatus. Got some exciting thoughts and, and some exciting guests in 2024. Uh, my name is John Robinson. I am the owner and founder of Our Ability Incorporated and excited to bring you this podcast this year. Our goal with uh, the Our Ability podcast in 2024 is to bring you some information. We've invited accessibility experts, entrepreneur experts, and employment experts from around the country to join us on our podcast. Every other week, we will re release a podcast, and hopefully it provides you some great information. We've uh, already pre-recorded a few of them from uh, our good friend of mine at Walmart, from an entrepreneur that we were uh, at their conference in, in the fall, and Pfizer, which is one of our, our bigger employers of people with disabilities, also has been pre-recorded. So we're excited about these. Um, the first episode in two weeks will be uh, Caroline Casey from The Valuable 500. And so stay tuned to the podcasts and, and make sure you join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're a business, an entrepreneur, person with a disability advocate, what have you, and, and would like to talk about you know your feelings about DE&I, diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility please please email me and and happy to happy to have you on the podcast really the goal with this is to bring de and i and accessibility back into the conversation and and that's what what i want to do and i'm doing that for a very specific reason um i over my shoulder have a television monitor a lot of you know that i came out of the television industry some 12 years ago before i started our ability and so uh, a big part of my DNA is media. And so I follow media uh, and, and still do when I certainly can. Another big part of my D, D, um, DNA is that I grew up in New Hampshire. And so New Hampshire is an interesting state. It's uh, in a lot of ways a misused word, but it's a very libertarian state. And it doesn't necessarily mean what, what you take it to mean today. But... Um, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, libertarian, um, there's a there's a voice for you or was a voice for you in New Hampshire. And so growing up in the 80s, uh, politics was sport. You know, a lot of us, you know, maybe follow ESPN or NFL or, or the National Hockey League, which I do. But growing up in New Hampshire, politics was your sport. You followed it. You had political leaders coming to the state every four years inundating the state, your high school, your college, your coffee shop, your breakfast spot, your ice cream, ice cream store, and you're shaking hands and meeting political leaders. I was really lucky. I got to uh, meet Fritz Hollings. <laughs> I got to meet Bob Dole. I also got to meet uh, Jesse Jackson. So there's, you know, the political spectrum was there in the 80s, and, and you got to meet a lot of people. And that really forged in me... Um, an interest in politics. So I've got an interest in politics. I've got an interest in media. And obviously, I'm a quadruple amputee, born without the extension of my arms and my legs. And so um, I'm a person with a disability. If you're looking at this video right now, uh, you, you know, if you look at me and I keep my arms down, I'm a 55 year old white male brush cut. If you see me driving my pickup truck, you might think I'm politically bent in one direction. But if you see me walking down the street, three foot eight, uh, you know, limited arms and legs, you might think something else. And the truth is I'm a little bit of both. And, and that's, I think that's the way a lot of us should be. Uh, in 2023, though, I felt the change. 2024, it's a political season, right? We're, we're about to go into a political campaign. We're about to be inundated with political ads, uh, left, right, unfortunately, no center. Um, but you're going to get political ads and you're going to be told a lot of different things from mainstream media. And, and I, I implore all of you to listen, really take a moment and listen to what's being said. Um, but I listened in 2023 when we didn't do the podcast and we were focusing on our jobs board, our artificial intelligence to help individuals with disabilities find jobs. Um, and that's been an exciting year in 2023 to be able to finish that project and help people find employment using our generative AI, but wasn't doing the podcast, wasn't cycling across New York state, wasn't necessarily out there in the community, but here at my desk, but I had CNN, MSNBC, Fox news, CNBC on over my shoulder. 
and I was noticing something uh, extremely troubling. And it didn't matter what side of the political fence we were on. Uh, what I've noticed in the last nine months is that there's a lack of diversity, equity, and inclusion conversation. It's really stopped. About two years ago, there was a, a, a heavy DEI conversation in corporate America. There was a, a lot of conversation early in COVID on DEI, partially because our workforce was changing and we needed to bring more people into the workforce in a virtual hybrid way. And so it was opening up pathways to DEI and certainly people with disabilities. But in 2023, and as the uh, economy started talking about, quote, recession, and we were told that the economy was, was in peril, um, diversity, equity, inclusion, was the conversation was cut. There's a reason for that. Um, coming out of television, coming out of the television industry, I know full well that in the 90s and the early 2000s, that if there was the appearance of an economic downturn, that advertising changed. Advertising was cut. It's the first place that's cut. Uh, you start cutting your advertising because that's 3 5 10%, depending on your industry, that you can cut back and save and continue to keep your profit. Well, in, in today's day and age, um, DE&I is one of those places that you can cut. You don't have to spend money on diversity, equity, and inclusion. You don't have to recruit around diversity, equity, and inclusion. You certainly don't have to have programs. And so I was noticing uh, firsthand that our ability incorporated the lack of conversation, but also secondarily on the media that DE&I was taking a backseat. What is troubling is that it's completely non-existent in conversation. And so what I'm hoping that we can do in with our, our ability podcast is we can refocus the lens here. If I can use a, a, a camera metaphor on diversity, equity, and inclusion with the hope that we can talk about disability. And I'm doing this for a, a very specific reason. Some of you may think it's self-serving with what we do with our company and maybe it is, but it's also here to, to open up the eyes and hearts and minds of people out there that, that there are, there's pain out here when you stop talking about DE&I. <clears throat> and so what's the pain? The pain is that there are less people with disabilities, less people with diverse backgrounds, less people who are marginalized that are being welcomed into the workforce, that are being welcomed into the conversation, that are being welcomed onto mainstream media. And there is much less. In 2023, we saw less conversations uh, on mainstream media. I'm specifically thinking about Bloomberg and CNBC because I'm a big believer in follow the money. You want to know where we're going? Uh, follow the money and you're going to find out. And that's, I think, what troubles me the most, that they're the lack of conversation. And so I'm hoping that we can shed a little bit of light in our small universe with our ability, with our podcast, with our website, with our social media, that there are some parties out there that care a great deal about DE&I. Again, I mentioned at the beginning that we interviewed uh, Victor Khaleesi, who is with Walmart, uh, who's a champion for disability. We interviewed Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer wants to talk about employment and opportunity for people with disabilities. Um, we interviewed Caroline Casey, who's a, a rock star in Europe on entrepreneurship and employment for people with disabilities and, and many, many more coming in 2024. And we're doing it hopefully to elevate the conversation. And, and the conversation needs to be elevated. Uh, the truth of the matter is that we're in a, a troubling time. I'm having a debate right now with some of my, my college friends, college roommates, personal friends. Uh, any of you who know me know how important that they are. Having a debate right now that is democracy lost? Are we gone? Have, has it gone away? Why does that matter in this DE&I conversation? Well, Here's why I think it matters, and it's my, my personal opinion, so take it for, for what that's worth. I followed a, a pickup truck today, and I'm driving my pickup truck with my Syracuse University bumper sticker, and I'm proud, of, proud to be orange. Um, I followed another pickup truck today that, that had the bumper sticker, uh, Biden is a piece of shit. And I'm thinking about that, and as I'm driving behind the bumper sticker, thinking, how much hate do you have in your heart that you are willing to put a bumper sticker on your truck that says that? How much hate do you have? You probably don't think you have any hate. 
but there's some hate there. Maybe you should just put a Republican bumper sticker on your truck. Do you have to take it to the point that you're making it personal and then likening the president of the United States, whether you like him or not, to fecal matter? <laughs> do you have to do that? So where, do you, where does that come from? Again, I said I watched CNBC and watched Bloomberg all last year, and, and I, I'm realizing the lack of conversation on DE&I, but I'm also noticing a huge conversation, probably 10 to 1, conservatives to liberals. So why is this? Why is this? So we've got a world that is limiting DE&I funding and spending. Not everybody. We've got some great car corporate partners. We hope to have more. We've got a world that's spending less money on diversity, equity, inclusion. And we've also, at the same time, got a world that is completely bent 35% of us to get back to where we were four years ago. Why is that? Profit. Money. Why do you think Rupert Murdoch and Lachlan Murdoch have taken this, this stance with Fox Media? Why do you think they've leaned into certain aspects of misinformation? Money. Why do you think that uh, CNBC, the sister or brother of MSNBC, MSNBC considered liberal, probably isn't? Why is CNBC so completely conservative in the morning? Money. Why do companies stop spending on diversity, equity, and inclusion? Money. Profit. Why are there bumper stickers out there that call Biden a piece of shit? Money. Because the conservative media, and all media, quite frankly, want you to pick a side. They want you to pick a side. So that the, the hatred amongst the two groups allows the very rich to stay rich. They want me to pick a side. MSNBC, Fox News, Democrat, Republican, whatever you want to call it, they want me to pick a side so that I'm so angry at the other side that I, I forget what's really going on, which is a lack of an inclusive society. Inclusive meaning economic as well. What we advocate for, what I, I shouldn't say we, what I advocate for is an inclusive society an inclusive economic society, an inclusive opportunity society, and inclusive, an inclusive DE&I society. See, I think the real problem is economic. Steve Forbes said it right in the 80s or 90s that there should be a flat tax. Everybody should be taxed the same. It would create opportunity for everybody across the board. But the w extreme wealthy get to keep their money. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they profit from the hate of the other side. They do. Part of why I want to do this podcast in 2024 is I don't want to get into the debate, the debate necessarily of which side is right or wrong, but I do want to elevate the conversation on what's missing. In my opinion, what's missing is opportunity. In our specific case, people with disabilities want the opportunity to work, to start businesses, to buy products, to purchase services, to be included in society. And oh, by the way, if we're still going to limit immigration, and we're a country of immigrants, who are we kidding ourselves? But if we're going to limit immigration, where else are you going to get future employees? People with disabilities have to be part of that equation. And for people with disabilities to be part of that equation in employment, you need to have diversity, equity, and inclusion. You're driving around in a bumper sticker so that says Biden is a piece of shit or you've got somebody pissing on Donald Trump's name. Good for you with the hatred. But do me a favor, think about the other side. And think about who gets hurt in that argument. Because who really gets hurt in that political argument is you. We get hurt 
each other gets hurt. And the greater good is lost. And what's the greater good? The greater good is a melting pot called the United States of America. The greater good are policies that equal the playing field for all Americans. The greater good is diversity, equity, and inclusion. That's what we need to be working towards. I won't spend a lot of time in our podcast in 2024 doing this, but once in a while I will. I'm looking forward to it. What I'm even more looking forward to is speaking to some powerful people. Caroline Casey and Victor Khaleesi are two of the ones coming up in the next couple of episodes. I hope you can join us. If you'd like to join us personally, please do. Uh, if you've got something to say, send me an email. I'd be happy to invite you onto the podcast. If you know a business leader, industry that's interested in diversity, equity, inclusion, let us know. If you know an entrepreneur with a disability, please let us know. We would love to include them in our podcast. I'm John Robinson. 